They get ready for Whoa, game three. three. Look Ooh, at PJ Tucker. Color. Oh, I guess they got the memo. Oh, with no shirt on. Who was that, oh, Butch Lewis? Oh, I, mean, so I, I don't good. know. What was the memo exactly? What, no, what was the boxing promoter that used to wear a suit? Isn't, isn't that no lavender? In that lavender? Yeah. That's lavender. I don't think that's not purple. That's, no, that's lavender. lavender man. That is, what, come on, man. Oh, that's, I see, that's what we used to see. Ooh, that night he Come on, man. He got on that Nikki. about any of that. The Warriors trying to prove that home is still not only where the heart is, but where the winds are at Oracle. We welcome you inside our studios here in Atlanta, another playoff and weekend edition of Game Time. Casey Sturt, GA, and ROG, Sam Mitchell. Hey, then on the end. PJ Tucker took that, took that title away from me. With that suit he had on? No, he no, got no. The, hey, he That's got the, the ultimate. He got to play well in that. He's got to play good. You look better than he does in that. I mean, come yeah, on, man. Hold up. I can't wear that suit. First what, of all, most first humans of all, my can't chest, wear that suit. I, you got to have a body and a chest and some arms to wear that. Right. To wear a suit with no shirt on? Right. And he got to be a confident man. He got on chokers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the thing. This is good when we get to bring credibility back. Let's do that with tonight's Limelight Stats, presented by Corona Extra. Thank you. Never needed a Corona more than right now. Uh, most consecutive home playoff wins, 15 and counting. Look, we've seen dominance in the postseason, right? We saw Cleveland last night show that. We saw Boston show it. But the Warriors have done it more than anybody else. GA, from a, a player standpoint, What's what's the biggest thing that happens for Golden State after a loss like that and between that time and when they get to the arena tonight? Well, you always assess your performance. And the one thing about Golden State, they take ownership. When they don't play well, they look internally. I think you're going to see a better Steph Curry. I think you'll see a better Klay Thompson. Uh, I think you'll also see a better Draymond Green because Draymond's a guy that I think's got to up his level a little bit. Hadn't scored it. Not that he's going to get 20 a night, but you'd like to see him if you're Golden State in that 10, 12 point a night range. And, and he hasn't really been there yet. So I, I just think their intensity level is going to be higher. Plus, I think they have a, a, a tremendous amount of respect for Houston. And, and Draymond talked about it. You know, we're at our best when we feel challenged. And I do think that they feel like Houston if they don't play well, is capable of giving them some significant problems. We saw Boston have a hard time on the east side carrying home play to the road. How does Houston do a better job at that tonight? Well, the mindset. They got to come in understanding that this Golden State Warriors team, what, the last 15 games, they undefeated at home in the playoffs. And so they understand how good Golden State is. If you're Houston, you want to keep Golden State playing the way they played in game two. And even game one, to be, to be honest with you, KD went off. He was kind of unstoppable. But guess what Golden State did? They fell in that trap of just feeding the ball to KD, watching him, everybody standing and watching him go one-on-one. -on -one. And then when he had the pass, no one was in rhythm. You didn't have the movement, and you weren't getting the quality shots to other guys that they're normally getting. So I think with Steve Kerr, to GA's point, I think Steve Kerr going to go back and say, look, we got to play Warriors basketball. It's great at times in certain situations. Because KD, KD has a mismatch almost every time down the court. But you got to stay to your principles and who you are and stick within your offense. Because as we saw, KD had 38 points. But it wasn't a factor in the game because no one else got involved. And you know this, Greg. When you're not touching the ball involved in offense, you lose mental focus, you turn the ball over, and you're not as good defensively. All right, nobody has uh, bought the pilot yet for our new show, Shorties Only, so we're going to have to settle for this today. <laughs> Bring in our good friend who is uh, out there, out west. There he is. Seiko, I'm loving that shirt. Get this shirt off. You, dude, how, you're always, like, up in your, your suit game when you leave and you get on the road. Is that, is that, <laughs> is that your thing? Well, apparently I got on too many clothes for P.J. Tucker. I need to get this shirt off. <laughs> Don't talk about my real P.J. Oh, boy. Let, let me start with this because Steph Curry, we know, has not been very Steph-like, Seku, over the first couple of games. How much of that can be attributed to health and rust, and how much is just basically Steph maybe working too hard defensively to have enough offensively left? Well, I think a little bit is ring rust, no doubt. You know, six games back. Um, you know, after missing all that time at the end of the regular season and to start the playoffs, you, you can't, un, you know, overstate how much that has affected him. But Houston targeted him in game two. I mean, they went right after him, went, you know, everybody who had the ball, if they looked up and saw 30 in front of them, they went after him. And that was just a good strategic move by the Rockets. But what you have to be careful of if you're Houston is thinking that's going to work time and again because – 
Steps back here to Oracle. Clay Thompson needs to have a big game. If you let the Splash Brothers get going in here, it could, it could turn ugly real fast. Seku, we always uh, hear and talk about the fact that supporting cast members, we saw it last night too, right on the east side, they always seem to play better at home. We've never had to say supporting cast anything about the dubs because they always have stars, but it seems like it's KD and a supporting cast more than we're used to lately, right? Well, it's, it's KD who's going to be able to get whatever he wants every night in this series. I think that's pretty clear. Um, they don't have, the Rockets don't have a matchup for KD individually that's going to really slow him down. So if you're giving KD 30 plus every night in this series, that means Clay or Steph has to get 25 to 30, and then somebody else has to get 18 to 24. Basically, what the Rockets did getting the big game they got out of Eric Gordon the last game, and then CP and, and James Harden playing as well as they did PJ Tucker as a bonus. So, you know, the, the Warriors have plenty of, you know, candidates, Case. It's not like they don't have. A bunch of different guys they could choose from, but it's hard to tell which one of them is going to be the guy that steps up tonight and plays big for them here at home. You know, quickly on the way out, you given Houston, you're there. You given Houston based on what you see much of a chance tonight on the road in game three? Yeah, don't forget, opening night of this season, ring night, hanging a banner, the Rockets came in here and spoiled it. I mean, they're, they're going to be competitive. They're going to fight and try and win this game because they got to get home court back. This is their one opportunity. If they don't do it tonight, it puts a ton of pressure on them, you know, in game four. And you don't want that kind of pressure going back, you know, to Oracle, you know, from Oracle to Toyota Center trying to save, your, you know, your season against this Warriors team. All right. Uh, we appreciate imitation being uh, the greatest form of flattery, but – Happy that you wore a shirt under your jacket. So thanks. I'm keeping Andy. my shirt on. I got no gold chains and I got no hair on my chest. I'm keeping it on. <laughs> Take it easy. Sekou Smith, always fantastic right, coverage. He is out west. Uh, let's talk about Steph because I think it's, it's clearly an important factor, GA, in this series and the rest of the way. You watched him. How much of, of rust do you see and what else could it be? Well, I, I, I don't know why we always have this narrative when he doesn't shoot well, something's wrong. I didn't hear it against the Pelicans. He played the entire series after, I think he missed the first game. Yeah, he played four games, yep. I, Steph's not hurt. You know, you're not going to invest $200 million in somebody and throw them out there if they're not 100% ready to play. Now, rhythm-wise, you're not going to get your rhythm unless you play. But the reality is it, it's the game plan we've seen Cleveland use, and now we're seeing Houston use it. And the difference with Houston is they have two guys. So, like, even though if, if Kyrie were targeting him, you can only target him so many times, right? Because LeBron's going to have those other touches, and for the most part, you don't have to have Steph guard him. With Paul and Hard, it's a little bit different because they're both basically point guards. So they're going to continue. Look, and, and Steph's not a bad defender. What they're doing, it's, I used the analogy the other day, it's, it's like being a boxer. They're hitting him with body shots. They're, by forcing him to have to guard the pick and roll and then play one-on-one -on -one defense, he's getting hit an inordinate amount of times. And that takes an effect on you on the other end. Because remember, with the way they play, they use a lot of energy offensively because of all the cutting and the moving. Then you compound that with him having to expend himself energy-wise defensively, it just takes a lot out of you. And so they've got to be better defensively. They've got to really try to get him easier opportunities in transition. And I do think they need more balance in their offense. KD, even though the numbers were terrific, it, it did account for some other guys not being as involved in their offense. And so I, I don't think there's any issue with Steph. I mean, he just – these are tough matchups, you know, in the postseason because of the personnel that Houston has. In case, the one thing about this is, look, <clears throat> when you're the defending champion and you're a two-time MVP and a team is targeting you like this, think about this from this standpoint. We talk about James Harden in the past not being a good defender. I can't remember one time where I've seen a team game plan was to go at James Harden every single play. That's what they're doing to Steph Curry. This is what I believe is going to happen. Steph Curry is seeing what's happening. He's reading the newspapers. He's listening to it on talk radio. He's watching it on television. That pride is going to kick in. So if I'm Steph Curry, the first time you switch me, I'm filing somebody hard. <laughs> Seriously, because, at a, and Greg knows this in the NBA, <clears throat> if, it, if this works, Steph Curry going to see this from now on until he's out of the NBA. That's what every team game plan is going to be to do, to go after Steph Curry because they think it's going to affect them offensively, which is a chance to give them a better chance to win the game. 
I expect Steph Curry to step up and have a big game offensively, but I expect him to step up and have a big game defensively. They've been trying not to switch. They've been hedging, black and showing, and trying to get back, but Houston keeps doing it. So at a certain point, Greg will tell you, he's got to plant his feet in the ground and say, look, I'm going to defend James and Chris to the best of my ability, but you guys are going to stop targeting me like that because at a certain point it becomes a joke. It becomes a punchline, and Steph Curry is not a point punchline. You're talking about two-time MVP, two-time champion, could be going for four in a row. This guy got a lot of pride, and Greg said that he's not a bad defender, but obviously James Harden is an elite yeah. offensive player. So Steph Curry is going to have to do like we all have to do at some point, plant your feet in the ground, defend, and stop this narrative to where you're going to go at me for 48 minutes. And one thing, too, like Steph's not a bad defender, but when you look at their Hampton Five, he's the fifth best yep. defender of those five. But that's not a knock on him because those other four guys are all NBA defenders. So it's not like they're chopped liver. So why wouldn't you attack Steph, especially because you're attacking, attacking him with your natural position? They're not putting him on small forwards. Their two point guards are the ones that they're trying to create matchups to put him in one-on-one -on -one situations.